Hi, this is Miles with Best Practice Medicine. On today's episode of BPM TV, we'll be discussing traction splinting. Traction splinting is a specific intervention for an isolated mid-shaft femur fracture, and it's also one of the random skills you may encounter in your NRAMT psychomotor examination. When a femur bone is broken, the strong quadriceps muscles may enter spasm and cause the bones to overlap into each other, stabbing into the soft tissue. Applying traction pulls the bones back into anatomic position, preventing additional injury, reducing patient pain, and decreasing the likelihood for neurovascular compromise. The indication for traction splinting is an isolated mid-shaft femur fracture, which is a fracture in the middle third of the femur bone with no other injuries proximal or distal to the fracture. Carefully inspect and palpate the entire injured extremity while asking your patient if they're experiencing pain or any other sign of injury in any part of the affected extremity. The reason that traction splinting is contraindicated in anything but an isolated mid-shaft femur fracture is that the force of the splint may be sufficient to cause further damage to any other injury in the extremity. Additionally, due to the painful nature of a femur fracture, a break located closely adjacent to the hip or the knee will be extremely hard to differentiate from an injury to the hip or the knee. Just like any other splinting intervention, after taking the appropriate BSI precautions and determining your scene is safe, you'll apply manual stabilization to the injured part, and in the case of traction, we'll apply manual traction to the injured part. When I apply manual traction, I like to cup one heel with my left hand and hold the top of the foot with my other in order to allow enough room for a helper to place the ankle hitch. When preparing to apply manual traction, communicate with your patient that the step you're about to perform will likely be very painful for them, but will soon help to alleviate their pain once completed. When determining how much manual traction to apply, you can use the patient's opposite uninjured leg as a rough estimate point. I'm gonna pull on your leg here. This is probably gonna really, really hurt, but as soon as I finish, it's gonna start feeling better, okay? Ready? One, two, three. Oh. All right, breathe nice and deep for me. There you go, nice. Oh, it feels better. Okay. Once manual traction has been applied, do not release it until it's been replaced with mechanical traction. Once your partner has initiated manual traction, obtain a baseline assessment of the patient's circulation, sensation, and motion in the injured extremity distal to the injury site. Then prepare, adjust, and position the splint next to the injured leg. So when I secure the ischial strap, I'll use a gentle back and forth motion to slide it up over the ischium, the bone on the bottom of the patient's pelvis. I'll communicate with my partner supplying manual stabilization to avoid displacing the leg. I like to leave a little extra loop of slack here so that I can pull tension and make sure that I can slide the strap up until it's tight. Carefully tighten the ischial strap using opposing force in order to not displace the extremity. It's important that the strap is positioned high on the patient's hip to avoid pulling on the upper femur and displacing the bone ends. To place the ankle hitch, slide it under the void behind the ankle and secure it using the Velcro. Make sure the straps of the ankle hitch are positioned evenly on either side of the patient's leg so that when mechanical traction is applied, it pulls in a neutral anatomic direction. If the straps are twisted, it can apply a twisting, displacing force to the patient's leg. I'm gonna apply mechanical traction. Let me know when my force equals yours. Here we go. My force. Here you go, 15 pounds. Great. When preparing your support straps, lay them out so they're in the position you want them to be when you apply them to avoid getting caught or tangled on the ground. The longest strap goes highest on the patient's leg, second longest goes just above the knee, and the shortest just below the knee. There's a void underneath the patient's knee. It's usually an easy place to slide the strap underneath. And coordinating with your partner holding manual stabilization, use a zigzag motion. Position the strap, place, and tighten without causing unnecessary displacement. Mm -hmm. 
Now that the splint's been fully applied, we'll reassess the ankle hitch to make sure it's securely attached, and we'll reassess the ischial strap to make sure it's correctly placed and still firmly snug. We'll reassess the patient's circulation, motion, and sensation. Katie, what toe am I touching? Big toe. Can you wiggle him for me? Fetal pulse is intact. Finally, we'll package the patient for transport by securing both her body and the splint to a long spine board. Special thanks to Katie, one of our paramedic education specialists, and Matt, an EMT instructor and videographer. We hope you found this video informational. Please subscribe for more content from BPM TV. And as always, thanks for watching.